Very good. So we understand now how the phase and the currents can be related to each other, uh, to the incoming EMF, the amplitude of the incoming EMF, and the phase of the incoming EMF. The last thing I wanted to discuss with you is the width of this peak. Now, to determine that width, there's a, a standard measure that people you usually use for widths, and that's something called the full width at half maximum, typically called FW, full width, half maximum. And what that means is we want to look not at the maximum value. You've determined the maximum value. You look for the point that is, has exactly half of that maximum value. And then you ask, what is the width in frequency? What is the uh, delta omega at that particular point? From Not from the center, but from one side of the peak to the other side of the peak. Now, I should warn you that typically full width half maximum is usually measured in terms of power in the circuit. But uh, since we, we're not really dealing with power in today's discussion, we will determine the full width of half maximum actually for the peak in the current, which is something that's actually easily measured on something like an oscilloscope. So to determine that full width at half maximum, I need the condition then where my peak here has exactly half of its maximum value. Its maximum value, remember, was E naught over R. So I have E naught over 2R will be the value that I'm looking for. And I'm, I'm seeking that value when I'm at a frequency. And here's E naught over then the square root of, recall, R squared plus 1 over omega C minus L omega quantity squared. Now, to solve for this equation, what we would want to do is, of course, to uh, clear uh, the fractions. So I'm going to multiply this onto the other side of the equation. And then this term will go on to the other side on top. And then I square both sides. Notice when I do this, the E naughts are going to cancel each other. And of course, when I square this side of my equation, I just undo the square root. So I will have r squared plus this factor 1 over omega c minus l omega squared. And that then has to equal, when I square this side of the equation, 4r squared. Next, clearly, what we want to do is to subtract r squared from both sides, yielding 3r squared on the right. We then will be taking the square root, which will yield 1 over omega c minus l times omega equals now plus or minus, because there are two roots when we take that square root, square root of 3 from our factor of 3, and root r squared, of course, just leaves me back with r. Next, in order to determine which values of omega can yield this solution, I should put both sides of my, uh, I should put both terms on the left side onto a common denominator. I will call that uh, omega c. That gives me 1 minus. I have to multiply Lw by omega c, which will give me omega squared times the factor of L times c. Now here, then, is where we begin to see why we think of the peak as being rather narrow. Ideally, to get the largest response out of our circuit, of course, we want the least amount of resistance. So we will make the resistor R fairly small. If this right-hand side, then, is almost zero, the way we can accomplish the equality, then, would be to have this term be nearly 1. But recall that the definition of omega naught was such that omega naught squared was 1 over LC. And in fact, when omega is close to omega naught, then we will get zero on the left-hand side, matching an appropriate value for a small resistance on the right-hand side. So given this then, what we want to do is to write our actual frequency that is yielding this half maximum result that we're solving for, uh, to write it as omega plus some 
amount of displacement from omega. So let me write this as 1 minus, rather than omega squared, I will call it omega naught plus some amount of shift. I'll call that delta omega squared times LC divided by then, again, likewise in the denominator, omega naught plus delta omega times the capacitance C. And that then has to equal plus or minus root 3 times R. Now, here is where the uh, magic is going to come in. Let's uh, expand out this quadratic factor here. Now, as we square out the quadratic, we will have omega naught squared plus 2 omega naught times our displacement away from the center, delta omega plus delta omega squared. Notice what happens. The first term, the omega naught squared term, when it multiplies LC because of the definition of omega naught squared, omega naught squared times LC will give me 1, and that value of 1 from this times LC will cancel the one that we have here. So this one cancels, and that cancels with that omega naught squared term. Next, notice that we are thinking that we should be somewhere near omega naught. That means that delta omega should be small compared to omega naught, which then not surprisingly means that this second term here also would now, that the second term actually is going to be negligible. And likewise, in the denominator, to a very good approximation, we can take this delta term here also as negligible. And once we've done that, we have just one term in the numerator and one term in the denominator, and we can begin to cancel terms. Notice that this capacitance C cancels nicely with this factor of C. This factor of omega naught cancels the, in my one remaining factor in the numerator, cancels this omega naught from it, and I'm left with minus two delta omega times L is plus or minus root three R. If I solve that, then delta omega will equal, well, when I bring the minus over times the plus or minus, that gives me minus or plus, but either way you look at it, right, it's uh, either choice of sign. We had root three, but now that's divided by two, so I've got root three over two. I have my factor of r from the right-hand side, and the only other piece that was left uncanceled from the left-hand side was L. I'm dividing by that then to solve for my delta omega times r over L. So this tells me then that the frequencies I'm looking for that give me half maximum are centered on omega naught but go either in the plus or minus direction by this corresponding amount. So I'm going from the center line omega naught to plus or minus lowercase delta. The full width then, the delta omega, the capital delta omega, the full width at the half maximum, right, which we were calling this full width capital delta omega is twice the magnitude of my little delta omega because this is how far I go on either side of omega naught. And then that gives me my final result, root three times then r divided by L. And that then is our final result in our discussion then for today's lecture. We can see that indeed for a small value of resistance, particularly when compared to the uh, inductance, but for a small value of resistance, this peak can become very, very narrow. And that has the very practical application of using this circuit to select out particular frequencies from a frequency spectrum precisely what, for instance, your cell phone uses to tune in on the specific cell phone frequencies from the cell phone towers. And with that, then, we will end today's lecture.